I asked the question uh, earlier, thank you, Michael. I asked the question earlier um, today, had anybody ever seen you know, any kind of mysterious creature or anything like that? Um, has anybody ever seen a UFO? Unidentified, this man told me his story, um, and believe it or not, there are things that he said to me uh, literally, when, when they asked me uh, what I was going to talk about this year, um, I, you know, just some thoughts came to my mind quickly, and I knew they needed to get, you know, the promotions out and everything like that. So I said, okay, I'll talk about cryptid creatures, I'll talk about UFOs. And several years ago, I did a video on UFOs, you know, based upon the Bible. To me, I got to see everything through the lens of the scriptures. I have to, the Bible's the only thing in this world I trust. You take all the stories about underground bases and aliens fighting wars and, you know, crash shipped at Roswell and there was alien dead bodies that they recovered and, you, and, and all of these stories about abductions and men in black and Area 51 and, you know, uh, Eisenhower meeting with aliens and writing out a contract and I mean I, I know all these stories and I can't I don't know that I believe any of them except I see that it's possible by the Word of God and that's that's I guess you can call that the spiritual gift that God has given me or the desire is to know the truth and then to say the truth and if i say it then i want to have a reputation of me that says if mike hoggard says it it's because he sees it in the word of god and he's going to give you the word of god to prove it because as this world creeps more and more into the deception i appreciate what carl said i, I you know the the churches being deceived and spreading the lies and the deceptions from the new age, that troubles me because if men can't trust the church to give them the truth, there is nothing else left in this world except God's ambassadors here in this world to tell people the truth of the word of God. And if God's people or the people who pretend to be God's people won't do it, then the world isn't, and they're, they're not going to know the truth, and they're going to fall for the deception. And so I think God's people have to tell everything that's going on God's way, and if I can't see it in the Bible, then I won't believe it. So there were things that I've been hesitant to talk about on this UFO thing, on, on cryptozoology and things like that, because I, I didn't know what it was from the Word of God. But literally... In the past month and a half, my wife will tell you I've done nothing but research, read books, watch uh, people's testimonies, watch documentaries. Some of them I'd look at it and go, that's garbage, that's nothing, I'm going to do away with that, and I'd go on to something else. And so I have literally just been immersed in this, and I can tell you the idea that there is life intelligent life outside of planet earth when that knowledge is revealed to the world i cannot begin to describe to you just how much is going to change after that day because the western world's mind view of the world and the creation for the past thousand years has been based upon what God said in his word, that the earth is the center of the universe, that God made the earth alone to possess life. There is nothing outside of planet earth. There's all these billions of galaxies and stars in what seems to be an endless space, but we know it ends somewhere. And then on the other side of that is God and the heaven. Of that mindset has prevailed in Western thought now for a thousand, two thousand years. But in the last 100 years, 150 years, more so in the last, I would say, 50 or 60 years, there's been a transfer, a change over. More and more people now have stopped seeing the earth being in the center of the universe and the earth as the exclusive 
uh, domain of God's thoughts and God's actions. In other words, there is life out there, and if there is life out there, then all of us Bible believers obviously are wrong because we think that the earth is the center of everything that God does. So when the disclosure takes place, that there has been contact from intelligent life outside of planet Earth, I'm telling you, it will change every religion. Atheists will no longer be atheists. They will believe and know that life did not just accidentally pop up here on Earth. It was put here on purpose. Now, they're not going to believe in the Most High God that you and I believe in. They're going to reach shorter than that, and they're going to believe in the gods that are out there. We know them as gods. We know them as evil angels. We know them as devils. We know them as unclean spirits, familiar spirits, all these Bible terms, but they're going to believe that those gods put us here. So it's going to change every religion. Financial institutions are going to be changed. Governments are going to fall. Civilization and cultures around the world are all going to assimilate into a collective. Carl, that's what you've been talking about. The whole world becoming one. And it's going to do it the day that aliens have been, it's going to, with the day that it's disclosed that intelligence from outside this world has been in contact with people in this world and they're going to show up and they're going to change the world. So earlier when I talked, I said two things are going to happen that we're looking for. Two primary things. The appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ in the air, the gathering together of his saints on that day in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, and also a falling away takes place, whereby the man of sin is revealed, and th who is the son of perdition, and the institution of the fourth kingdom, spoken of in Daniel chapter 2. Those two things are going to change everything. For those of us who believe in Christ, yahoo, we're going home. But for the rest of the world, and I want to make it personal, everybody that you know that doesn't believe this book is about to become a follower of the man of sin, the son of perdition, and they are going to get a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Do you believe the Bible? Say amen. amen. I can't see you because the lights. I'm going, is anybody here? Is it just me? Okay. So, uh, he told me his UFO story, and there were things that he said, I've heard it before. I've heard it very similar things. There's a lot of similarities. You see up here on the screen, there's even a World Contact Day. Every year, March 15th, people get together and they say, the aliens are coming. The ETs, the ascended masters, the extraterrestrials, the gods, the angels, or whatever, they're coming. And there is a commemoration of a day in the future when man will make first contact with alien entities that are out there. That day, I'm telling you, according to the word of God, that day is going to happen. Now, uh, I should have been doing this all along. I'm going to play a video. Up here on the screen is about nine minutes worth of what I believe to be and what others, experts in the field, believe to be genuine video photographic proof of extraterrestrial vehicles. And by that, I mean they were not made in Michigan or Fargo or St. Louis or Sao Paulo or Moscow. They did not originate here on this earth. So I've watched, I don't know how many videos I don't, I've seen, I don't know how many clips, just like what you're seeing up there. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of photographs made 
before computers started making fake pictures of everything that's on the internet. If you saw a picture of guys digging up bones of a 12 foot tall giant, you did not see a photograph of guys digging up bones of a 12 foot giant. They were, I believe in that, but those were photoshopped, okay? So I've watched these videos, I've listened to the testimonies of average Joes like you and I, people who saw things that they weren't asking to see, people who saw ships, people who saw aliens, people who, saw, who had contact with them, people who were abducted. I've listened to hours and hours and hours of military, Air Force, Army, Marines, Navy, CIA, Department of Defense, people who are trained to defend our country against all enemies, domestic and foreign, alien, who are telling of first-hand or second-hand information. Some of you may have seen this back in the year 2000. A medical doctor by the name of Stephen Greer brought forth what he called the Disclosure Project. And he had guys that were former CIA, former Department of Defense, guys that worked at nuclear installations where we have nuclear rockets with warheads, guys that have seen pictures of things that you would go, I don't believe what I'm seeing. And he brought them, National Press Club, Washington, D.C., and they all stood up in a, and they gave a five to ten minute testimony of things that they saw and they said, I am willing to stand before Congress swear that I'm going to tell the truth and tell what I know. And his whole purpose for doing that was to try to get our government to release what it knows about alien or extraterrestrial biological entities, um, UAPs, which is the new thing for UFO. I don't know what's wrong with UFO. UFO is an unidentified flying object. UAP is unknown aerial phenomenon. That's the same thing. But it's a new name now. So they got a new name. But they, they, have, they talk about their encounters. They talk seriously about craft vehicles, the recovery of technology that is a hundred, a thousand years ahead of our technology. They talk about, and, they, and we're not talking about guys veiled and silhouetted so you can't see their face and you don't know who they are. You don't even know if they're telling the truth. We're talking about people who came out with their real name, their real identity, talked about w what their background was, what station or what military base they were in, what ship they were on, and they're all telling their stories, their first-hand knowledge of our government's participation in programs that involved UFOs. The American government will be the last government to release its files, I can tell you that. But other nations around the world, Great Britain, Chile, um, Ecuador, China, Russia, other nations in this world, they're releasing, I probably, I don't think all of it, but a large portion of their government and their military's information, which includes testimony, video, audio, photographs, material, pieces from ships that were recovered, that when they are examined, they did not originate on this earth. They have released these files already, and they're available through the World Wide Web. You've got, you got to know where to find them, but if you know where to find them, you can find them. You can read these stories. You can look at the evidence. So I, I, I have to see this then in the light of the Scriptures. If the Scriptures, if God says, don't believe any of this, this is a lie of the devil, then that's what I believe. But if this and what you see here and what I just told you is evidence of a nation or a race of people that lives above our earth and they have visited here, they have made contact here, they have done things to people here, they have vehicles 
that do things that no vehicle, I wish my car did what theirs does, because I would never be stuck in traffic again. And I'd never be stranded in Minneapolis and have to rent a car to get here. I would just get in my UFO and come on over here. I'd be over here in two seconds. I have to, if, if that's true, then I have to know from the word of God what it is. So I set myself down and I said, God, I want to know this. I want to see it in the light of scripture. I want to know so that I can tell people, hey, what you're seeing in here, this is just the devil putting this stuff in your mind. Don't believe any of it. Or I'm going to say, open your Bible to Ezekiel chapter 1. Open your Bible to Daniel chapter 2. Open your Bible to Genesis chapter 6. Open your Bible, open your Bible, open your Bible. That's what I'm going to tell you. And that's what I'm prepared to say this weekend. Again, my wife will tell you, I've done this all day long at work, at the church. I'd come home, eat dinner, and I'd go to my office at home, and I'd do this until late at night. I've been doing this, and I'm still, do, I'm still collecting evidence, still collecting research. Have you seen enough UFOs? Okay, let's get to some meat and potatoes here. Take a Bible, turn to Ezekiel chapter 1. Let me show you, let me show you a little bit about what you're seeing. Well, let me do this. Is there anybody here who does not, this is Truth Weekend, Truth Weekend, is there anybody here who does not believe one thing about UFOs and aliens? Will you be honest and say, thank you for your honesty, I appreciate it. Do you believe in God and His Son, Jesus Christ? Amen. Then keep on keeping on. Okay? I'm not going to try to ch convince you or change your mind. What I'm going to say to you is, I believe that what I just said, I can show you in the Word of God. So if God has you in a different ministry, different whatever, and he, you say, I don't need this in my mind, I'm still going to serve the Lord, I'm okay with that, okay? But I believe in what I'm saying, and I believe that this thing is going to change this world for the worse, not the better. And I'm going to talk about people who are reaching out and embracing these things and saying, come down and change our world. When they could have called upon the name of the Lord, Ezekiel chapter 1. You read Ezekiel 1, Ezekiel chapter 10, you're going to see very similar things. Revelation 4, you're going to kind of see it from a different angle, but it's still the same thing. Ezekiel chapter 1, I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. Pay attention in the Bible to the north. The north. Joel's army comes from the north. Joel, uh, Jeremiah said, a great evil is coming from the north. A, a great nation is coming from the north. My mighty army is coming from the north. God came down from the north. Let me ask you a question. Is there a mythological figure that children believe in that lives at the North Pole? What's his name? Santa Claus. I will tell you to go on YouTube and look for Apollo, uh, Apollo astronauts or various astronauts on their way back and forth to the moon who are reporting to NASA, Santa Claus is here. They couldn't say publicly, uh, there's a craft here watching us whiz around the moon. What do you want us to do? They could not say that. So they said... Santa Claus is here again, and Houston would respond, we copy. And that would be it. So these, there's something coming out of the north. There is in the whole alien race thing where people say, hey, we know that there's different races of aliens. One of those races is called the Nordics. Do you know what that word means? Nordic Come on, you Norwegians ought to know that one. What is Norway? What is the word Norway from? It's the North Way. It's from the North. There is a race of aliens that they say are the Nordics because they're tall and they have, you know, beautiful light-colored skin and blonde hair and blue eyes. That's what Adolf Hitler thought he was. 
And those Nordics, they're, they're for us. They're a beautiful race, and they're, they're going to come and help us out. Watch out for any nation. God said any nation that comes down from the north. And just, it just so happens there is no landmass at the North Pole. There is no continent at the North Pole. It's dead sea frozen, but there's no land up there. And God said a nation was going to come from the north. Now, it's either from way far north, like up in space north, or it's Canada. Take your pick. A whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and fire. I just don't think the Canadians got it in them. Amen. <laughs> and the brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber. Does that color ring a bell? I'm looking to my UFO guy here. Out of the midst of the fire. Look at verse 9. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went everyone straight forward. They had wings. They were humanoid in their appearance. Ezekiel 1, verse 12, And they went everyone straight forward. Whither the Spirit was to go, they went. And they turned not when they went. As um, for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and the appearance of lamps. Think about what people see up there. And it went up and down among the living creatures as the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. Look at verse 14. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning, which means that they would be here, they would be over there in a half a second, and they would be back in another half a second. They would not have to accelerate, and they would not have to decelerate. And that's what you see in your Bible. By the way, you're looking at God's car. God's flying chariot. You don't believe that? I'm going to prove it to you. Verse 15, Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold, wheel upon the earth. Chariots have wheels. By the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels uh, and their work was like under the color of beryl. That's amber. And they four had one likeness, and, and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. You ever seen the planet Saturn? It's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Verse 18, as for the rings, what does Saturn have around it? Rings. They were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes around about them four. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went Thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. What you are seeing is, you know, Eric Von Daniken writes a book called Chariot of the Gods, and he is, I read this book when I was a kid in middle school, and Von Daniken says, now this was the, the space aliens coming, and the chariot that they saw was the UFO, and the UFO had creatures in it, that's what the eyes, and they had little portals, and, that's, and so Von Daniken believed that God was a space alien. And this was his ship. He was far short of the reality. This was God. And this was God's vehicle of conveyance. God chose it that way. I don't know why. When I get to heaven, I'll ask him. But this was God's vehicle of conveyance. This is how God presented himself to Ezekiel, riding in his chariot. And the Bible says the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels, meaning that the wheels reacted to the will of the angels. The angels just had to think of where they wanted to go, and the wheels took them there. That's not unreal. My insurance agent told me three years ago, he attended a conference of certain insurance companies' agents, and they discussed not if, but when, smart cars would show up on the roads. Because if they had accident, who's paying for it? Because smart cars are supposed to be the thing that when you get in it, your will says to the car, take me to my workplace. And the car takes you to your workplace. So if there's an accident, whose fault was it? Is it your fault? You aren't driving. The car was driving. Is it the guy that wrote the software, the guy that built the hardware? Is it the government? Whose fault is it? And they're talking about this because this is a real thing that is happening right now in our lifetime. 
So the living creatures controlled the chariot. The chariot did what the living creatures wanted it to do. And in verse 22, And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal. That's the crystal sea that John saw in Revelation 4 uh, stretched forth over their heads above. And above the firmament, verse 26, that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne. Who sits on the throne? God does. The Son of Man sat on that throne, the appearance of a man above it. This was the living chariot of God. Now, if you say, uh, I'm not buying that. I've never heard that in my life. Psalm 104. Actually, I'll look at Psalm 68, 17. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. Your Bible, your Bible says that God's chariot are living angels. Thus, that's what you see in Ezekiel chapter 1. So, in days of old, kings, royalty, people of high breeding and wealth who thought they were too good when they were taken out uh, outside of their home, they were too good to touch the ground. So they had got, these were, that, the word for this, what you're seeing on the screen is sedan. Who in here drives a sedan? That's where the word came from. Sedans were for the wealthy and the royals, so when they went out and about, they didn't have to touch the dirty ground with their clothes. They were carried about by sometimes two, sometimes four men. This is your Levite priests, according to the law. What you're seeing here is the throne of God. Here's the two cherubs that cover the throne of God. This is the mercy seat. The Ark of the Covenant was God's throne. It was God's presence. It was carried about by four Levite priests. Those four Levite priests were an earthly representation of what Ezekiel and John saw in heaven. Does that make sense? For every heavenly thing, the Bible says there is an earthly figure or earthly shadow of it. So that since we can't really see the spiritual world, God says, I'm going to show you the physical world, and that's going to be a shadow of what is up in heaven. That's in the book of Hebrews. First Chronicle, when Solomon built the temple, he, he went way beyond what Moses did. And he builds this humongous platform for the Ark of the Covenant. Notice what he calls it. He calls it in verse 18, the chariot of the cherubims. That's what Ezekiel was describing. The chariot of the cherubims. In verse 32, 1 Kings 7, under the borders were four wheels. It was a four-wheel drive chariot. In case it snowed. Oh, come on, laugh a little bit. Your faces won't crack, come on. Four wheels. Axle trees of the wheels were joined to the base, and the height of the wheel was a cubit and a half a cubit. And the work of the wheels was like the work of a chariot wheel. They're axle trees which is the axle, their naves, which is what joined the axle tree to the rest of the chariot wheel, their, their fellows, which was the round ring, and their spokes. You know what spokes are. That's what holds the ring, the fellow, to the, um, to the nave. Four parts described here because it is an earthly representation of what God has in heaven. So if I said to you, God rides a chariot of angels. Do you now believe me? Wow, that only took 16 and a half seconds. I guess it's the cold that's got you slow or something. Looky here! Living chariots! What used to be supernatural 150, 200 years ago now is technology. You get in the chariot and the, chari the spirit of the chariot takes you wherever you want to go. This is, what is Tesla Motors? What do they do? They build not just electric cars, living, thinking, intelligent cars. That's what God rode in Ezekiel chapter 1. A living, thinking, intelligent chariot. 
So God has one. The devil says in Isaiah 14, I will be like I. So he has his. There is undoubtedly cherubs that are making appearance in our skies, landing and touching our earth. I believe my Bible says that's what they are. And I believe that's what they are. Let me give you a story. True story. See, I've, I've listened to all these UFO stories. A guy sent me a thumb drive with over 600 books about UFOs several years ago. I thought I'd never use it. Well, I've been going through these things. I haven't read all of them. I'm just searching through them, looking for things that capture my attention. I found out about an elementary school in Zimbabwe, and that kind of piqued my interest because we do work in Kenya. So I know the people a little bit. I know Africa a little bit. Here's an elementary school, mixed race school. Zimbabwe is similar, I guess, in their people to South Africa in that they have white and black, and then they have biracial there, and they all speak very well, good, proper English. And at this school in 1994, the teachers and all the staff was having a meeting with the headmaster of the school. There was one person, she ran sort of the commissary of the school, and she was, all the kids were out in the play area playing. And there was an area of the school they called the bush, and it, you know, had brush and scrub and thorns and thistles up there and snakes and spiders, and so the teacher said, you can't go up there, that's dangerous. So the kids never played up there. Well, they all saw... 62 children saw this silvery disc land in that area. They drew pictures of these three to four foot tall humanoid, gray skinned, big, slanted, dark, owl type eyes floating out of that ship. Some of the children, some of the black children who knew the myths of the culture of their forefathers thought they were tokoloshes, little goblins or little devils from African folklore, and they went screaming and running inside because that's what they thought they were. I think that's what they were. But these alien entities came out. Some of these children said in interviews, filmed interviews, BBC came, their bureau chief came and interviewed these children. They said, I felt a sense of love coming from the aliens. I loved them. Others said, when I looked into the eyes of the aliens, thoughts came into my head that we were polluting the earth. All the trees were going to burn up. We were not taking very good care of the earth, Brother Carl. What spirit is that? What's her name? Gaia. Because if I've heard that story, I've heard it in various versions from dozens and scores of other people who've had contact with alien entities who told them we're here because you're doing a lousy job of taking care of the earth. We're here to aid and assist you. One of the first movies made about UFOs and alien contact was The Day the Earth Stood Still. And Klaatu, the alien who looks like a man, coming out of the alien spacecraft, is telling the president, telling Congress, telling the United Nations, telling the world, you're a danger and a threat to this planet. You're polluting the environment. Now you have nuclear weapons, and we're concerned that you're going to mess this earth up, and we're here to put a stop to this. That same idea has been coming from these aliens for 30 to 40 years now. Same story. And there, uh, there's a documentary coming out this year about the Ariel Elementary School in Zimbabwe. They interviewed these now adults who saw this thing 
Back in 1994, they're still telling this. They're saying this was not a schoolyard prank. We didn't all get together and make this up. We saw this thing. Some of them said, I wished I'd never seen this thing because now people think I'm nuts. A man by the name of John Mack from Harvard University flew out to interview and test these children on whether or not they were telling the truth or not. And he said, he said, I was quite convinced that this was something genuinely mysterious and real and that I needed to think about if this is real, then what does that mean? So I want you to think about it. Those of you who are skeptical, Project Blue Book was the newly formed Air Force's plan to make America stop thinking about seeing these flying saucers. So they hired guys like J. Allen Hynek, a physics professor and a noted UFO skeptic. They brought him in and the goal was make him out to be swamp gas, falling stars, the planet Venus, um, weather balloons, drunken pizza night, or whatever you can, write them off as being not actual unidentified flying objects of possible alien origin. Anything but that. When Hynek was done with Project Blue Book, he said, I believe we are being visited by alien entities from beyond Earth. That's what he said. He now is a believer. He shows up. Steven Spielberg calls him back in 1975 and says, hey, I'm basing this movie upon your classification of alien contact, close encounters of the third kind. Will you come and show up in my movie? And J. Allen Hynek showed up as a cameo. It's like three seconds long. He shows up, he's got a goatee beard because you know he's a professor, he looks smart, and he's got his pipe. And he's watching the mothership come down. Hynek now believes. So, because Hynek said, 90% of these thousands and thousands of flying saucer stories, we were able to write off and say they were nothing. 90%. 10% were real. So I'm going to ask you a question. Let's say in the past 10 years there has been, I'm just going to pull a number, let's say 40,000. In the past 10 years, 40,000 reports to MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. They gather and collect data, all the data they can on UFO contact. Let's say in the past 10 years, there's been 40,000 reports of UFOs and alien contact, ships landing, people meeting up with alien entities and so on. If just one of those stories is true, just one, does that not mean that we now have a situation that the world is going to have to deal with and we as Bible-believing Christians are going to have to reconcile in our mind if that ship is real and it didn't come from this planet and that guy is not from this earth, where or oh where in my Bible is he? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Because the world is going to bow before the gods who are going to descend down upon planet Earth. And if you don't believe that one, let's go back to Bible school. Turn to, we read Ephesians chapter 6 earlier today. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness where? High places. Turn to Revelation 12. Verse 3. We have a great red dragon. Verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Then later on it says in verse 7, there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. 
How many angels are there? How many angels are there in the, in the, in the whole of heaven of heavens? How many angels exist? Does anybody know the number? Does anybody know what the Bible says? How many angels there are? Brother Howard, Brother Rick, I think I'm going to have to come up here about six times a year every year and just kind of get everybody up to speed. The Bible says there is an innumerable company of angels. You know what that means? They can't be numbered. Well, let me tell you how smart God is. God is so smart, God can take infinite and cut it in thirds. God can take an endless number of things and know exactly how much one-third of that is. That's how smart God is. So he's got you all figured out. Amen? These children were not lying. They all told the same story. Even 20-some-odd years later, they're telling the same story. They saw something. What did they see? Somebody has to have the answer, the real answers. Because I can tell you about the groups that are reaching out to these aliens to say to them, come down here. Our governments are corrupt. Our financial system is a mess. This whole world is sick. We need gods to descend down here to make our planet better and our race superior and to fix all of our problems. If you happen to be in and around Phoenix, March 13th, 1997, you saw lights in the sky along with 10 to 20,000 other people who saw it, videotaped it, photographed it, including the governor of Arizona, who now came out and says, I saw it and I have no idea what it was. St. Clair, Illinois, up where we live in the year 2000, there was a UFO case up there, policemen, they called uh, the Air Force Base, Edwards Air Force Base there in Illinois and asked them, you got something flying around that we don't know about? And they said, no, we don't have anything. But there was something moving around. So the St. Louis local Fox affiliate did a half hour news program on this UFO event because it moved and hundreds of people saw it. They were calling police departments and it, didn't made a, it never made a sound. And it did things that we don't have aircraft that can do that. Are these people lying? Air traffic controllers have seen these things. There is evidence. There is air traffic control radar evidence of these things. This, was, this happened up in around um, Seattle. They tracked... Seattle Airport starts calling all these commercial airlines that are on approach to Seattle saying, uh, we've got something, we don't know what it is, uh, what do you see? And these guys would say, yeah, in my 10 o'clock or my 1 o'clock or in whatever position, I see a big bright light. This is in the middle of the night. I see a big bright light, and uh, this thing is traveling. It's about 45, 50,000 feet up in the air, and it's doing things. We, we don't know what in the world. This thing would appear and disappear out of radar. It will. And I have a friend who was a commercial airline pilot. He told me this story. He knows the guy who knows the guy who saw this. Aguadilla Air Force Base, we have, that's Puerto Rico, so we have um, Custom and Border Tr Patrol stationed there at the Aguadilla Airport. And this, there's a video of this, type in Aguadilla UFO, and you'll watch this UFO fly over this airport. Customs and Border Helicopter started after this thing and recorded it on their forward-looking infrared. The thing, at one point, when it got over the ocean, split in two and then disappeared on video. Chile Air Force, they released this when they released all their... Their uh, UFO files, this thing ejected some sort of black mass out of its rear end. Nobody knows what it was or what it was doing. Now, if you don't believe in UFOs, I will tell you that the United States Department of Defense does. 
they released information about a program called ATIP, Ad, uh, Advanced Aerial Threat Identification Program. Hear the word threat in there? Because the Pentagon, and they, they hired Luis Elizondo, former military guy, used to work for the CIA. They hired him to come on board and go around and get Air Force pilots, Navy pilots, um, anybody in the military who had an encounter with an unidentified or an unknown aerial phenomenon. And he spent five years and $22 million collecting videos, and I mean high definition videos, photographs, material. And when I say material, I'm not saying data. I'm saying physical, tangibles, touchable pieces that they have. This is admitted. This was not leaked. The, the Pentagon released to the New York Times. The New York Times is not noted for their weekly UFO reports. That's the National Enquirer. The New York Times wrote an article, Glowing Oils and Black Money, the Pentagon's Mysterious UFO Program. The program still exists, but it's not named and it's now top secret. But what they were researching was, and by the way, they released this video of the, what they call the Tic Tac or the Gimbal. The best men in the world fly airplanes for the United States Air Force. They fly around our nation and the world making sure that you can go to sleep tonight without being bombed. They're trained to recognize what kind of airplane is flying around, whether it belongs to the Chinese or the Russians or the North Koreans or the Middle East, or if it's a confiscated aircraft on its way to do another 9-11. These guys are trained. They, they called these guys, the guys are doing training. They called these guys and said, what kind of ordinance you got on board? They said, well, we don't have anything, we're training. They said, we got a bogey out here, go find out what it is and go engage this thing. And they did. And they released, this is not leaked, it's not illegal, they released the video up and it's low definition. And I know they have high definition. But here's what Lou Elizondo said that they were focusing on in ATIP. They were focusing on lift, propulsion, control, power generation, spatial or temporal translation. You know, that's, you know what spatial temporal translation means? How it's able to move from A to B without accelerating, without decelerating, and how it appears to break the time-space continuum by being in this place and two seconds later, appearing 300 miles away in this space. They were investigating that. You know why they were investigating? Materials, configuration, human interface, human effects, technology integration. Do you know what that term means? How we can get these crafts, technology, and put them in our ships. I'm not, I'm not making this up. Look at this. This is from Luis Elizondo's presentation. He was the director. He said, in 2009, specific elements in the Department of Defense resist the effort to release this information based on philosophical difference. Notice this line. The fact that the phenomena is real is not denied. So you say, I don't believe in UFOs. The guys who are defending our country do. And they do because they have seen it with their eyes, they have heard it with their ears, and they've handled it with their hands. Just like we believe the Word of God because we've seen it with our eyes, our ears, and we've handled it with our hands, the Word of Life. These guys in the military believe in these things because they have the proof. What's going to happen in this world when that proof is shown to the world? When evidence, what will happen in this world 
when one of these ships descends down over Washington, D.C., Moscow, Beijing, Jerusalem, Paris, the Vatican, Sao Paulo, Tokyo, and they stay there so that everybody in the world can see them. What do you think is going to happen in this world? Do you think everybody's going to go about their day like nothing's, there's nothing new? It's going to change the world and your friends and family members and church members are going to fall for it. Remember, there's a strong delusion coming. Luis Elizondo no longer works for the Pentagon. He now works for a company started by a rock star. Tom DeLonge. Has anybody ever heard of Blink-182? What kind of songs they sing? Country Western? I'm proud to be an Okie from Muskogee. Is that what they sing? No, you don't want to listen to their music. They sing the most vulgar, nasty, vile things that people have ever said. Tom DeLonge was a rock star. Now he is an artist. He's, he owns a movie company. He's written uh, best-selling novels. He owns a sportswear company. And now he formed a company. And he's hired top, senior top officials from the CIA, Department of Defense, uh, Lockheed Martin Skunk Works. You know what that is? They're the guys that build all of our secret flying machines that they don't want the Russians to know about. He's hired these guys because they have technology in hand from vessels. I didn't make that up. So he starts this company called To The Stars. And I got to looking at that, and uh, one of our followers sent me information on Tom DeLonge. Their focus is on the collection and scientific evaluation of material samples obtained through reliable reports of advanced aerospace vehicles. I'm telling you, they have parts from an ET craft. And here's what they're working on. Warp drive. What is warp drive? Thank you. The ability to warp the time-space continuum so instead of it taking 400,000 years to get to a star, it takes four hours. And Gene Roddenberry was a Freemason, and he thought about all these things. Now, now, they're, act, they're not just guessing, how can we do this? They're saying, we know the ET craft do it, we want to figure out how we can do it so we can go to the stars. What happened at the Tower of Babel? What did man want to do in Genesis 11? You talked about that. What did they want to do? Build something so they could reach where? Beamed energy propulsion. That means we can put a base on Mars that has no resources whatsoever, and we can send a signal from Earth to Mars and power the station. Beamed energy, brain-computer interfaces, genetics, genetics. Who has a King James Bible? Come on, you know me better than that. Turn to Daniel 2. Why genetics? What do you think they want? What do you think a company who knows that we have either a current or an expected technology coming from alien entities, what do you think they want to do with genetics? Hybrids. DNA. What? Active creation. 
Huh? Hack. Oh, I like that better. Hack. That's a computer word. You know what that means? Breaking into somebody's program and copying their code or rewriting it or adding something to it or taking something away, right? Genesis chapter 3, what did the serpent promise Eve? You shall be as gods. Gods. Man wants to become a higher form. Blavatsky pushed it. Crowley pushed it. The newage pushes it. Newage rhymes with sewage. So they push it. And it's not, see, we've got past the days of, um, oh, what was that Hollywood actress, real weird lady that was Shirley MacLaine. See, we've gotten past Miss Shirley MacLaine, walking around naked going, I want the aliens to come down. We've gotten past that. Now we have the most serious-minded men in the world. The Vatican is on board on this thing. You have Jesuit priests saying, the alien is our brother. They are part of God's creation. Let's, yes, go, go with them, you pedophile priest. You can amen that. Daniel chapter 2, the fourth kingdom. What are they going to do? See, you only get this out of a King James. You won't get this from an NIV or a New American Standard or a New English Bible or a Christian Standard Bible. You won't get this from any of the other Bible. You get it from a King James. Daniel chapter 2, the fourth kingdom, verse 40, shall be strong as iron, but they're mingled with clay. Iron is strong, clay is weak. They're opposites, right? They're opposites. One is strong and one is weak. One is iron, one is clay. So, where's my welders? Who in here welds things? You weld things? You ever welded Play-Doh to an iron rod? Why not? Have you not tried it? Why wouldn't you try it? Don't you think it'll work? No, it won't. That's what this is telling you. You see, Jesus said, and Adam said, Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. They will cleave together and the two shall become one. And Paul said, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. You see, Christ and the church cleave together and they're inseparable. Somebody say amen. The devil's version of this is the gods joining with humans and they don't cleave together because iron does not mix with clay so look in verse 43 whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay they shall mingle themselves with what what is the seed of men what does that term mean you see, neither King James nor Daniel the prophet knew the term deoxyribonucleic acid. But we know what seed is now, don't we? Whether it's soybean seed or corn seed or human seed, we know what it is. It's a bundle of DNA that makes us who we are. And they, why is it the fourth kingdom? We read it a while ago, principalities, powers, Rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual, spiritual wickedness in high places. They are going to mingle themselves with the seed of men. This is why To The Stars Academy wants to work on advanced genetics. Because I guarantee you, somebody has heard some of the aliens say, we can cure your diseases. We can fix your problem of death. Because that's what Satan promised Eve. Ye shall not surely die, but ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Here's Tom DeLonge. Not only is he a rock star and a pervert, don't 
Google the lyrics to his songs. And I guarantee you, 400 people are going, Tom DeLonge lyrics. I told you not to do it. There's something interesting in these pictures. Not only is Tom DeLonge in every one of these pictures, but Tom DeLonge's guitar is in every one of these pictures. What do you see? Square and compass. Tom DeLonge's a Freemason. And Tom DeLonge owns a company that has the top officials, former officials of the United States government working for him, a rock star, to develop the technology and the ability so that the star people will help us go up there and be like them. The very core of Freemasonry. This is, he formed a new group called Angels and Airwaves. Look at his symbol. Look at the symbol that he chose for his new rock and roll group. The all-seeing eye, the double-headed eagle, which is they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. It's two entities in one body is what that double-headed eagle is. It represents the sons of God and the daughters of men combined together, cleaving together. The square and the compass is this. Oh, he has a, a phrase on here, Latin phrase, et ducet mundus per lus, which means to lead the world to the dawn. What does it say of Lucifer, who is, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Did you see the word loose up there, L-U-C-E? See it? Let me get my pen. Am I boring you? Okay. See that word? It means light or dawn, morning. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, the dawn. To, and, and Tom's group wants to lead the world to Lucifer, the light. But Lucifer's not the light, is he? He's darkness. He's a false light. The very principles of Freemasonry in the square and compass is this. This is what Albert Pike said. He said, hey, hey, hey. He's fat Albert Pike. I for, uh, forgot to tell you that. Hey, hey, hey. The square therefore is a natural and appropriate symbol of this earth and the things that belong to it. The compass is an equally natural and appropriate symbol of the heavens and all celestial things and celestial natures. So it may be said that in man, the divine, which are the stars, the gods, is united to the human. That's what that means. And Tom DeLong's To the Stars Academy is 100% in leading the world to join with the gods. Turn to um, 1 Corinthians 15. There's a rumor that a certain someone wanted no part of the Red River Bible Prophecy Conference and refused to attend because he despised the quote-unquote blasphemy of the angels mingling with humans. It's not blasphemy. It's what God said was going to happen. If I, were to able, if I were able to prove to you that the sons of God were angels from the Bible, would you believe it? Would you, even, would you even let me give you the evidence? Because I would ask you then to come up and tell me where the sons of God in Genesis 6 are the lineage of Seth and show it to me verse by verse. It ain't there. It never was there. So I'm going to show it to you. Look at 1 Corinthians 15. 
Do you believe that angels, spirit beings, have bodies? Or do they just appear that way at times? Do you believe they have bodies? Why do you believe that? They left their habitation. Uh huh. I'm going to throw one at you. Do you believe it's possible that they recovered an alien wrecked ship at Roswell and found in it three dead alien bodies? Do you believe that's possible? Biblically. Okay, aliens up there. That's how I'm defining aliens. Those, those guys up there. Extraterrestrial race. Do you believe it's possible? If I, if I showed it to you from the Bible, would you give me a hundred bucks? Uh huh. Okay. Let's say Michael, the angel, or Gabriel, they turned bad. They started smoking, drinking, cheating on their, you know, they turned bad. And they came down here. Do you believe they have bodies that made it with human women? Do you believe then that guys like Michael and Gabriel came down here and got killed in a spacecraft wreck? If I can show it to you in the Bible, will you give me a hundred bucks? Man, you Norwegians are tough to work with, I tell you. I'll do it for free. Yes, sir. Oh, they're down there too. Revelation 9 says they are. The witch at Endor said they were down there. What did she see? When she was trying to summon Samuel, which was not Samuel, what did she see? God's ascending out of the earth. Where does the false prophet come from in Revelation 13? The earth. Thank you for that, Rick. 1 Corinthians 15. Look at verse 37. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. Where's my uh, soybean farmers? Anybody? Where's my corn farmers? Where's my tomato guys? Anybody plant tomatoes? When you put a seed in the ground, you know what that is, don't you? It's a hard shell that holds in a bundle of DNA that's just waiting to do something. Right? So we know what seed is now, and we know how it works. So, it may chance of wheat or some other grain, but God giveth it a what? Body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own what? So if it has a body, it has seed. Would you agree with that? Look, when you look at that, those two verses, would you agree that if it has a body, a living body, it has seed? So look at verse 39. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there's one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another flesh of fishes, another of birds. There are celestial what? You know what celestial means? Heavens. That's where we get the word ceiling from. Heavens. The, the spirits have bodies. Bodies. That's what your Bible says. The, two, the three guys that showed up at Abraham's house, one of them was the Lord Jesus, we know that. The other two were angels. Were they not? Because the next chapter says, the angels came to Sodom. And before that chapter, they were men, and the men said, should we tell Abraham what we're going to Sodom to do, to tell Lot? Something like that. And Abraham took these guys and fed them. Cat, they killed a calf, cooked it, gave them bread and butter, and oh, I'm hungry already. Gave them a calf to eat, and they ate it and washed their feet. They were touchable. 
They had feet. They had a bottom that they sat on. They had a head that they looked at. They had arms and hands. They had hands because these two angels took Lot and his wife and his two daughters by their hands, touchable, and took them out of Sodom. That's what your Bible says. So I believe it. So when these two angels got to Sodom, the Sodomites wanted to with them. They had bodies that were tangible bodies. And those bodies, according to this, have seed. Genesis chapter 3. I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy and her. And the serpent was who? Who was the serpent? Satan. Satan has DNA. That's what your Bible says. Oh, you want the... Uh, Tomorrow clock, tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Sons of God, daughters of men, I believe this Bible. I believe this Bible's right. Tim, go sit down. I believe this Bible's right. God, listen, listen to me. God put us here in this time at this day to know this information. And he wrote this book as an infallible guide so that we don't fall when everybody else does. Why did you come? To be entertained? I got no entertainment in me. Well, let me show you this very quickly. When Jan Heilick gave the classification, he gave close encounters of the first kind, close encounters of the second kind, close encounters of the third kind. A close encounter of the third kind was actual physical contact between an earthling and an alien entity, an extraterrestrial being. There is a fourth classification, the fourth kind, alien abduction. Abductees claim that gray aliens will appear out of nowhere, usually at night, take them out of their homes, often right through walls and closed windows. They have memories of being on a ship of some kind, surrounded by aliens, being probed, examined. Sometimes surgical procedures are performed, and some even report that devices were implanted in them. The guy that sent me that bundle of books, this is one of them, Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind. He talks about the central focus of the alien abduction program is, according to Jacob, the collection of human eggs and sperm. Why? One of the purposes for which UFOs travel to Earth is to abduct humans to help aliens produce other beings. Uh, we have famous abduction stories, Betty and Barney Hill. Mixed race couple. This, when I first heard about this, I'm going, black people don't marry white people. Then my daughter married a black guy, so I'm cool with it. So this was 1961. They were, uh, Barney Hill says, they took seed out of him. Travis Walton. This is the best, the best alien abduction story. It is undeniable. These six guys where they had a contract to clear brush at a state park um, and they worked all day. They were coming back. It was late at night. They looked over the hill. They saw this big red glow. They thought there might have been a forest fire, so they drove over to it, these old you know, logging roads. They drove over to it in a king cab truck and they saw this ship. Travis Walton got out. He said it was the worst mistake of his life. He got out and he walked over there where that ship was hovering and it looked like it's about to take off, and Travis is going like this. I mean, he's eyeballing the thing. He's taking it all in. And all of a sudden, this thing, this light comes out, grabs him, lifts him up between heaven and earth, holds him there for a while, and then drops him. And he's lifeless, scared the willies out of his buddies, and they drove off. And when the ship disappeared, they said, we got to go back and get Travis. And one of the guys is going, I don't want to go back. He's crying like a baby in the back of this. I mean, these are men. So they drive back, Travis Walton is gone. He is gone. They go back and they tell the story. And of course, state police gets involved and people, and I mean, it's, I mean, it's big headlines everywhere. And these guys are saying what they saw. They didn't invent a story. They said, this is what we saw. 
They took polygraph test after polygraph test after polygraph test. They passed every one of them. Travis Walton is missing. Five days later, one of the guys gets a phone call from Travis Walton. His last remembrance was that he thought he had only been gone for a few hours. He wakes up and he's on this table and these gray aliens are there and he gets scared. He starts doing like karate kicks to them and they run off. And so he goes down a corridor and they go this way, so he goes that way. And I won't tell you the whole story, but he ends up with these guys. They're the Nordics. Now, do aliens look like humans? No, let's ask God. God, are there angels that look like us? Abraham knows it. So does Mary, the mother of Jesus. So does Elizabeth. So does Manoah and his wife, the mother and father of Samson. So does Moses. So does about half the people in the Bible. They know that certain of God's angelic realm look like humans. Huh? Where did they get reformed? I think God made them a specific way. He gave them a body that he chose for them. That's what I'm reading in 1 Corinthians. Okay? And I get what you're saying. Shape-shifting, right? Okay? And I'm, st I'm not there yet on that one. I'm still looking. Okay? But these take him, make him pass out. He ends up, he wakes up on a street, on a road, and sees this ship flying off. He finds a gas station, makes a phone call, and says, it's me, Travis, and they're freaking out because he's been gone for five days. And the police, they all went back to the scene where Travis disappeared. They're, they got dogs sniffing for corpses. I mean, they're looking for this guy. To this day, these guys all swear we told the truth. Best documented case of an alien abduction. And I believe it because I see it here. I even see the races of aliens in this book, in this book. Um, Whitley Strieber, Whitley Strieber, he starts getting abducted, but now he's like, he's like, you know what, uh, by the way, you know what Travis Walton said? He said, I think they're here to help us. He's going around doing UFO stuff all over the world saying, I think they're, 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 they're going to benefit us, they're going to help us out. And what I'm saying to you is, all of these people are reaching out to these evil angels. Um, I don't have time to get into all that. Owls, owls are in the Bible. So, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, I promise you, I will show you in the Bible that the sons of God are spirit beings and their bodies may very well have ended up dead at Roswell, New Mexico. Tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. And if you miss it, we'll record it for you. We'll put it on your DVR, all right? Tim, God bless you. Come up here and take over. I'll keep these people till midnight. I love you guys.